Hello, we are now going to work in our next module. Here we are in module two, and this is really all about stages of growth module and a little bit about how companies grow. So let's take a look at this. It's very simple. What we have here is just a brief reading stages of growth. Our activity is the slide deck. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up and go through that with you. And then the only assignment for this module is the reading quiz. So once you've completed the reading, just go right ahead and take that quiz and you will feel very comfortable completing that once you've done the reading. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the slide deck as it relates to module two. So methods of growth. So we're look, when we look at growth, we, think we have certain assumptions in mind, right? We're thinking that the company has a good product market fit, which means that it has some sales along the way. There's some sort of momentum going in the business. It's not just brand new, just hasn't opened stores today. They're actually looking more in the area of like, how can I grow instead of how can I get started? And we also, another assumption that we have is that the company desires to grow. We know that there are several businesses that don't really have an interest in growing. Perhaps mom and pop shops, restaurants and small restaurants and cafes that have no interest in taking the initiative and spending that extra energy to grow the business. They really don't want to have many, many uh, locations or to start a franchise model or any other type of growth. They're interested in just staying just the way they are. And that's fine, but we're looking at businesses that want to grow, so they have a desire for growth. We also need to take into consideration that there's always customer attrition. There's always times where, yes, we're building our customer base, but we have fallout and it just happens just like the rain. <laughs> so we can't help that the fact, no matter how hard we try to maintain our customer base, we still have some level of attrition. Customers go elsewhere. Sometimes they just move out of the area or they may wind up um, finding a competitor. It just many different things come along the way. Now we wanna take a look at our customer factory. So this is uh, part of the optional reading. We want to look at this customer factory it is an abbreviated version of a business model, similar to the business model canvas, but a very fragmented portion of it and how it really late relates to customers. So let's take a look at this visual metaphor for this customer factory. So what we're looking at this, where we have the inputs, those are customers that are unaware of our product or service at this point. Now, this customer factory really represents what? It represents our, our, uh, our value proposition, right? It's how we create and deliver and capture value for our customers. So it's really our value proposition summed up. But these unaware customers find out about our value proposition, and hopefully they come out as happy customers. We've made a sale and we've converted them. So now they are hopefully happy customers. And that is the model we want to try to emanate. And we are going to be uh, working on three different case studies and they all have components of this customer factory. So one component would be to add or modify revenue streams. And how can we go about doing that? It's really here in the revenue section where the revenue is coming in to the company after the customer has already found out about the factory, found out about your value proposition. What can we do? Well, we can maybe add a new product or service. Uh, we might be able to add new features to our product or service. Maybe we can modify pricing and the list goes on. But these are some ideas that we can think about when we're looking at adding or modifying our revenue stream. So another tactic is finding new customers uh, in adjacent markets. And how do we do that? Well, this is the 
the acquisition part. The we looked at the revenue, but now we're looking at acquisition. And how do we go about that? We can take our existing products to a new customer base, a new segment of customers that might be an option for us. Uh, we may be able to adjust our promotional message or advertising or our channels. Right? As we recall with our business model canvas, we have our channels that we deliver that value proposition to our customers. We might be able to work in different channels. So that is another opportunity for us to go into adjacent markets. The third is improving conversion. We always want to uh, improve our conversion rate, right? We remember we have our, our sales funnel and we funnel our customers into that from a large group coming aware of our product or service and certainly our value proposition and then funneling them down there are, you know we lose a few along the way but we do funnel some down to uh, to create some sales to make them to convert them to customers so how do we improve our conversion rate what can we do about that well some things we can do is certainly it's in the acquisition stage again before or as they're just learning about our value proposition, maybe we can reach some more customers. Maybe we can reach more people, find a way to deliver our message to more people, even in that same customer segment group. Uh, and then certainly increase our customer rate. How could we go about doing that? Well, there are certain things we can do, right? We want to expand our funnel so that we have more people coming into the funnel. We can create uh, marketing content that others will share, right? So we want more referrals and that reaches into our referral section. You know, certainly we want to go viral. It's not so easy in the beginning, but eventually we hope to uh, provide some viral content or have our customers take our product or service viral. And we have certain techniques that we can think about that we can encourage that type of behavior from our customers with referrals or mentioning them on our social media platforms or their social media platforms to deliver new customers. All right, so we have, some, now here, let's look at the next one, growing distribution, tactic four. So growing a distribution or making activation easier, that is another way of looking at it. Certainly with the service, you're not looking at growing a distribution channel, we're maybe looking at making activation easier. And so how does that happen? That happens here in our activation section, right? So they've already become aware of our value proposition. And then now we want to make that easier for them. We want to make activation easier so that, that we can acquire their revenue and they become happy customers. So perhaps we can provide more places for our customers to buy our products. That can be uh, brick and mortar, or it could be virtual. So we can think in, in both ways there. Increase trial opportunities. That is you know, a way that perhaps with the business that we have, we may be able to do that. Partner to access block distribution channels. So partnering is also a method. It doesn't need to be hard dollar uh, partnerships. It can be soft partnerships as well. So partner, par soft partnership, meaning that if I have a company and you have a company and we work in the same customer segment area, but we have different products that we offer, if we can bundle them together or offer them together, we could actually increase our total customer segment uh, because we have more value to offer those customer segments. So that is an opportunity. Uh, here, we are increasing our retention. We want to look at uh, how we can increase our customer retention. How do we keep those customers with us longer, long term? And that falls in the retention area, right? We want to keep our customers happy. Uh, we want to keep customers engaged, maybe get their suggestions on how we can improve our product and service as well getting them engaged, having them be part of the solution uh, may be a method, but there are many others. And we'll take a look at all of those as well.
So we will be going through the case studies and analyzing all those tactics in the case study analysis that we'll be working on. We have cases, we have some reading, there are some podcasts and other methods that we can consider to grow a company. And then at, when we go into working with our company, helping our company to grow and offering suggestions for growth, we're going to consider all these and see how they may apply to that business that we're working with. So some certain takeaways from our scaling, it is the customer factory, of course, and uh, there are certain stages within a business life for growth. And we'll be taking a look at those too. When we think about a strategic plan, we're looking at long-term goals, right? They're not short-term tactics, they're long-term goals. But our long-term goal and strategy must be measurable. Otherwise, how do we know that we've achieved it? We need to be able to measure it somehow. So that's important. And through traction, that is a way. So we gain traction sometimes very slowly in the beginning, and then it starts to pick up speed, and then we start growing, hopefully exponentially. So we're looking at those tactics to help us along the way to gain more traction and to grow uh, more quickly. So we have different types of tactics that we can think about. We have low and high level tactics. Certainly the low level tactics are businesses that start out. When they're just starting out, they're thinking about attracting customers. They're not thinking about growth. They're just thinking, how do I just attract customers to my website so that we can make some sales, right? And, and so they're like low level type of tactics. Uh, we increase as we start to grow and start gaining some traction. And then we go into some higher level attraction. But we're really thinking more about our cash flow. We're thinking about our revenue projections. We're thinking about our daily users. We're thinking about measuring much more than we are in the early stage of low traction. When we look at stages of growth, we have several different stages. Um, and I know this is sort of the busy slide here, but bear with me. I have several different stages and you can, you get a feel for what's going on here in those early stages. So stages, stage one, we're looking at a, a company that's just existing. They're just starting out. They're building their MVP, perhaps they're using engagement and so forth. And then, um, then in stage two is the survival stage. Now they're starting to, okay, now we've gotten things rolling. We have some traction and what do we need to do now? Now we're counting our, our customers. We're looking at our average sale per customer. Uh, we're expanding perhaps more hiring employees and so forth. Stage three, and we call it 3D, is now we are profitable. We're actually making a net profit and we're in a happy place at this point. Uh, and so we are considering, girl, how do we grow now? How do we really get some good traction and start that good growth? And then getting results, so three stage 3G. Three so from D to G, we're looking at the results of growth. So now we're really getting the resources needed to grow. We're really moving much into growth and uh, we're really developing it. So from the 3D basic to now, we're really developing and gaining some good tractions in our stage 3G. Stage four, we are growing. We're continually growing. We're maturing. Uh, we have employees, maybe many employees. And this may take years to get to this point. In some businesses, it may take two or three years. Other businesses may take longer. Some businesses uh, can start out very quickly and grow within a year or two, but it is uh, rare that that happens. Normally, it's a three to four year process to get to the point where you're really starting to grow and you're maturing and things are really working well for you. And then, then stage five is the return on investments where you're adding shareholders, you're uh, growing to the point where you're looking for venture capital, you have a significant amount of growth. So this is really the focus of this course. We're looking at different stages of growth and how do we get to that next stage? 
as we mature uh, on, as a company, uh, this is a really good uh, article here from Ford Magazine. Paul A. Graham, uh, Paul Graham, excuse me, uh, came out with a report where he refers to elite startups that grow five to seven percent per week. Now, that's you may say, all right, you know, if I'm starting out at just a thousand dollars, you know, a week, five to seven percent. Well, it's not that much. Second week, you're looking at ten dollars. Yeah, growth, not a lot of money. And you say, oh yeah, I can do that, manage it. I can manage that. I can, I can measure it. I can keep track of it. And I can uh, make sure that I uh, do what is necessary within reason, of course, to be able to achieve that goal. So this is significant because here, if we look at a 7% growth here, $1,000, $70, uh, the second week, you know, now we're at 145 because we're going from the 70 to now 145. By year 52, well, now we have, uh, now we're bringing in revenue of 33,000. If we document this and measure our growth, it, it gives us a goal that we can work towards. We all know that if we don't have a goal written down, we probably will not achieve it. It's unlikely that we'll achieve it. But if we measure it and work towards it, then we have a foundation that we can work to gain that traction. Okay, so here at the end of that one year at 7%, now we have our first year revenue all in from all these weeks added up would be over half a million dollars in revenue. Now, of course we have expenses in there too, but still, if we don't focus, if we don't measure our growth, how can we know that we would achieve that much? Maybe we only achieve 2% growth or a 5% growth. So it really behooves us to pay close attention as we measure our growth. Now, one thing is that as a company grows year after year, this type of growth is just not attainable. It is unrealistic over time. But in, in um, startup companies, early years of growth, oh, it is very much attainable. So something we want to look uh, towards. So as a summary, we certainly want to consider tactics as we grow towards our goal. Uh, we look and that goal is our overall strategy. So we want to tie in those tactics to our overall goal and strategy. And we, we are aware that there is attrition. We're going to be losing customers here and there. So we're always focused on acquiring more customers. Growth needs to be measured so we can continue to grow and monitor our growth. So we wanna be sure that we measure our strategy. Okay, so here we have finished this slide deck right now. Please go ahead and um, if you haven't already done the reading, go ahead, do the reading, and then go ahead and take that quiz. I wanna thank you so much to seeing you virtually in the next module. Thank you so much.